Welcome to my basic review of the diminutive Ruger LCP 380 automatic semi-automatic pistol. You can see it here and just so I can give you the scale you can see how small it is. This is definitely a pocket gun. It's extremely small. Uh, this handgun is extremely popular ever since it came out on the market. It still continues to sell well and it is one of the main concealed carry pocket guns out there in the US due to its design and its reliability. Some people like to refer to it as the Glock of the pocket gun world. Um, as you know Glocks do make subcompacts but they don't make pocket guns that are as small as this. So some people call this the Glock of the pocket gun world just because it's extremely accurate and reliable. So let's go ahead and get into the review. The specifications and cost. This particular handgun only weighs 9.4 ounces. The total length is 5.16 inches. The barrel length is 2.75 inches. The total width is 0.82 inches and the total height is 3.6 inches. Again, it's extremely small. As I mentioned already, it's a 380 automatic and has a magazine capacity standard of six rounds. Now the intent of design, again, conceal carry and backup. You can conceal carry this as your primary firearm or you can have this as a backup to your primary firearm. It's up to you. Um, people can debate the validity of carrying such a small handgun as your primary, but this is a very accurate design so it would work as a primary concealed carry. And this is also popular with the females out there who need to conceal carry a small handgun due to whatever reasons, either living in a hot climate if they wear tighter clothes or if they wear a lot of business attire where it may be hard to conceal a full-size handgun, they can have a choice of something like this that they can throw in their purse, wallet, or discreetly carry on their person. So again, the intent of design is for concealed carry or a backup gun, like a hideout gun. Now, the perceived strengths of this little handgun is the size, very easy to carry, a lot of people say it's easier to carry a small gun every day than buy a big gun for concealed carry and leave it home. So a lot of people view that as a strength and along with the size you can see the design it's very snag free. That is great for pocket carry or inside the waistband carry. If you need to draw this firearm extremely fast it's not going to snag on anything so that is another big strength of this handgun. Another big strength of this handgun is even though it is a double action pull it's a very smooth double action pull. It's just under six pounds which is great for a double action pull. It's smooth, it's consistent and it has a consistent reset. So it's not hard to learn to shoot this. Once you get a little bit of trigger time with this uh, you'll learn to shoot it well and I'll cover that more in the training considerations. Now the perceived weaknesses of this particular handgun. Well, along with being a perceived strength, some people perceive the small stature of this gun as a weakness. Smaller handguns with a short sight radius and a long trigger pull can be harder to fire accurately than a longer handgun with a shorter trigger pull like a single action type trigger pull and better sights. Some people view that as a weakness. Uh, it all depends on the person and the environment. Another perceived weakness is the fact that it is only chambered in 380, and the maximum amount of 380 rounds you can have is seven rounds. Six in the magazine plus one in the hole. That is up to debate. A lot of people say the 380 is underpowered. I've already talked about it in other videos, so I'm not gonna get into it here. I will just state that shot placement is key. You put the rounds right where they need to go, that's what matters. And that's what people need to focus on. Now, the aftermarket support for this handgun. There's not a lot of aftermarket support, but then again, this handgun wasn't designed to have a lot of add-ons. Now, the one thing that is available from Laser Light and Crimson Trace is the mounted lasers that mount right here just forward of the trigger guard. Very good designs. And it's great for a small statured firearm such as this where aiming down the sights 
isn't exactly the best as you can see. This can be viewed as another perceived weakness by the way. There's really no sights to speak of. This gun is meant to be a point and shoot gun anywhere from 10 to 15 yards on end. It's not for longer range stuff. It's for close up self defense. But that laser does help out a lot. You get a laser put on this, get it sighted in to about 7 to 10 yards and you're good to go. Plus there is the added advantage of the uh, psychological effect if the bad guy's trying to get at you and he notices that there is a laser aimed at his junk or at his chest or right between his eyes. So the aftermarket support along with the laser you can get higher capacity magazines and you can get the finger extensions. This finger extension is from the factory. You can see this only allows me two finger grip but there is a longer extension from Pierce which will allow me a three finger grip and I'm looking into that that'll just allow for a little bit more controllability of the firearm. Other than that, you've got the high capacity magazines, the 10 and 15 round mags, single stack mags from Pro Mag, which are more for just range use or self-defense. If you use them for concealed carry, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a small firearm such as this. So other than what I've mentioned, there really isn't much aftermarket out there, but this gun isn't designed. It's designed to be carried. It's not designed to be completely tricked out. Now the training considerations with this handgun. It's extremely small. Smaller semi-automatics as a rule can be a little bit harder to get used to than big size semi-automatics. You have a small sight radius, you have a long trigger pull. Combine that with a very light gun which tends to recoil a lot more noticeable than heavier guns of the same caliber especially if you're shooting a high power defensive load. So you need to take that into consideration and you need just a little bit more trigger time on the range with this to use it effectively. Also, due to it being small, the manipulations are a little bit harder. You have to use more fine motor skills to manipulate the slide, the magazine release, inserting a new magazine. If you do experience a malfunction and you need to clear it in a hurry, there's more fine motor skills involved with manipulating such a small firearm. When you're manipulating a small firearm like this in a stressful situation, you run the risk of even dropping it, fumbling with it, um, which can cost you a lot of time and it can cost you a lot more. So I highly recommend if you do buy a small firearm such as this, I highly recommend that you put the time in and spend the money uh, if you so choose to get a training course or if you're already familiar with basic firearm handling, spend the money on ammo, get out there, put the rounds through, get used to how this gun handles because you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the ones that you may potentially defend if you have to use a handgun such as this in a self-defense situation. Now, the other types of firearms that are readily available on the market that I guess would be considered the competition for this would be the kel series handguns such as the kel P3AT and the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard. Also you look at more high-end you have the small SIG uh, 380 that's modeled more after a 1911 design and then when you go a little bit bigger you've got the Walther designs and whatnot. But the only other gun that's ex more exactly like this is the kel -Tec. In fact the Ruger took the design cues from Keltec. You hold the, this Ruger up to a Keltec P3AT and you'll notice that it's pretty much the same thing, just Ruger is a little bit more refined. So I hope you found this basic review helpful. If you're looking at one of these, again, these are really nice little handguns to have and they're great for a concealed carry option if you just can't fit a bigger handgun for whatever reason. Um, one good example is for you athletic folk out there, do you like to run a lot? A gun like this would be perfect when you're wearing running clothes that don't allow you to carry a full size as well. You can have one of these either in an ankle holster or in a fanny or some type of carry rig. Uh, they even make some armbands, I believe, that house your MP3 player and you can fit a gun like this in them. I'll have to look on the internet to see what... Uh, company makes those. But again, hope you like the review and if you have any 
experience with the Ruger LCP, feel free to post a comment, good or bad, and or post a video response. So thank you for watching.